Hello my YouTube friends and welcome to my channel. Today I'm looking at uh, motor braking and uh, in motor braking we're looking at three types of braking that is uh, uh, the most common types of braking are mechanical brakes and then we have uh, the electrical types of braking which are dynamic braking, plugging braking and regenerative braking. Now, braking types uh, for both um, AC and DC motors uh, is what we are going to look at. So we start with the first one, which is braking uh, mechanical brakes. Uh, the mechanical brakes are usually of two types. You've got the disc type, as most of you have seen, um, similar to what you see in the bikes. Um, it's the same that you can see also in being applied in motors so you can have either the, the, the disc type of braking or the drum type of braking and what you will notice um, in this case is that during braking the solenoid uh, will be pushed in and as this pushes it applies a force in this direction which closes the brake shoe or the, 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 the which forces the brake shoes to attach to the drum and this drum is connected directly connected to the motor um, rotor as the rotor rotates this drum is also rotating as the brakes come in play they begin to stop the motor once the motor has, has been stopped to ensure that the motor stops uh, quickly so this is the solenoid coil which uh, pushes this solenoid valve when it is activated so this is how the drums, um, the mechanical brakes operate. The advantage of the mechanical brakes is that the mechanical brakes can hold a suspended load um, in which most of the electrical um, methods can't achieve having or holding a suspended load. Now, when we come to um, <clears throat> the control circuit for braking, mechanical braking, so what you have is once the motor is stopped, um, uh, the, the solenoid is activated and the solenoid uh, pushes the, the brakes and the brakes can hold. Um, so this is the way uh, it up, uh, operates. Um, now let's look at dynamic braking. Dynamic braking, we can analyze it in, in two forms. And that is one uh, for for DC motors, and then secondly we look at AC motors. Now in <clears throat> DC motors, what happens is that um, we achieve dynamic braking by ensuring that the motor goes into a generator mode. And when the, once the motor goes into generator mode, um, it it, it, the power that it produces produces a counter torque and that counter torque which is produced prevents the armature from, from turning or in other ways the counter torque uh, makes the armature hard to turn and the, the torque is directly proportional to um, is directly proportional to the armature current in the circuit so this is what you see here. Um, the count torque is directly proportional to the armature current. And this is what we have in the DC circuit. So what you have is you have the motor running. Once the motor is stopped, you have once when the motor is running, these uh, contacts are all uh, closed and this one opens. And once the motor is stopped, what will happen is these will return to their normally open status and then the 3M will return to its normally closed status bringing on a dynamic braking resistor which uh, ensures that the motor goes into uh, generation mode because of the resistance produce, produced here. And once the motor acts as a generator then we achieve that counter torque which um, begins to break the motor. If we come to this to AC um, to achieve dynamic braking in AC motors we have to inject a DC current 
through this bridge rectifier here and um, through that bridge rectifier we achieve the injection of a DC current when the motor has been stopped and then that DC current creates now the uh, <coughs> creates a stationary magnetic field which gets induced into the rotor bars because the rotor is still rotating by inertia and then because of that um, attraction that induced um, current um, and the field the magnetic flux uh, in the circuit develops torque that opposes the actual direction of flow of the, rot the rotor and this slows down the motor very quickly um, and so if we look at the operation of the circuit this happens when the motor is um, is stopped then the dynamic braking <coughs> coil uh, brings in uh, these two circuits which two contacts which close to inject in a direct current to the motor and so we achieve the braking uh, of the motor then when we look at plugging uh, plugging of the motor plugging is ba the basic reversal of, of operation of the motor to achieve braking so uh, this for both ac and dc motors we simply reverse the motor so it develops a counter torque that acts as a braking force so in most cases for dc we use what we call an unplugging relay uh, that disconnects the motor when it has reached zero speed. So the motor will be rotating in forward direction, for instance, then it is reversed. Then once it goes and rotates to almost a halt, before it begins to reverse, the circuit is cut off. And that's what the ant plugging really uh, basically does. So in this case, sorry for that, in this case, you notice that you've got the contacts. These are the reversal contacts. So once um, the circuit is running uh, in the forward direction and uh, or in any direction, for instance, forward direction, when the circuit is stopped, the stop button is pressed, what will happen is the forward direction um, disengages and the motor is changed into a reversal direction. So the, the reverse direction is energized. When, once the reverse direction is energized, it's going to close these two contacts. And the rotation of the armature is reversed. The current begins to flow in the circuit like so through the um, armature. When initially the direction of flow of current when it's running in the forward was in this direction. So we did mention that when you reverse the direction of uh, current through the armature, you reverse the uh, direction of rotation of the DC motor. And this is how it is achieved um, uh, in plugging. Uh, a DC motor and when we look at an AC motor uh, the, the, the basic reversal is placed and then in most cases you've got uh, this is a time controlled reversal where you simply engage reverse the motor and then as the motor gets to a halt there's a timer that is that controls the plugging circuit so that timer will count and once the motor reaches a halt it will open its contact and the uh, reverse contact is de-energized and it stops this the motor running in other ways you can also use the plugging switch which controls the operation of the re reverse contactor once the reverse contactor is engaged the plugging switch will deactivate the or de-energize the reversing contactor 
once the motor reaches um, zero speed. The other form of um, braking that is used, which is also electrical braking, is what we call regenerative braking. Now, regenerative braking involves adding a mechanical load um, when the motor uh, has been stopped. And this mechanical load forces the motor to act as a generator. And in that instance, it operates more or less similar to dynamic braking. But it is um, this, this counter torque which the generator produces in this case is achieved by adding um, an external load, um, an external load to the circuit that ensures the motor goes in generator mode and produces a counter torque that opposes the direction of flow of the rotor and in so doing breaks the motor. So this is the braking types that exist and now we're going to look at um, a few examples on how we do uh, braking in general.